Hello everybody and welcome. Let's talk about the problem step by step on interview bit. I'm going to explain a simple mathematical solution and I'm going to explain the exact intuitions and observations I took to get to the solution. All right, let's get started. All right, let's formally go over the problem statement once. The input given to you is an integer which ranges from negative 10 to the power 9 to positive 10 to the power 9. This constraint will become important in a minute. And the condition given to you is that you start from some point zero. So it's a number line from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we're going to start from the point zero. Now from each point, from this particular point zero, we can go forward and backward by plus i or minus i as we wish. Now this i is defined by the number of steps we've previously taken. So in the first time, we can go to one distance forward or backward. In the second time, we can go two distance forward or backward and then three and then four and so on and so forth. And the goal of this problem is to output an integer. And this integer is going to be the minimum number of moves, minimum number of moves required to reach the target. So somehow we have to move forward and backward in such a way that we can reach the point A from the point Z. All right, now that we're clear on the problem statement, let's actually look at an example to understand this better. Let's say that the target given to us is a equals to 2, which means that we have to somehow reach from the point 0 to the point 2. How can we do that? Well, in the first step, we're going to take one step forward, reaching from 0 to 1. Now from this point 1, we're going to take two steps backward, getting ourselves to negative 1. And now from negative 1, I'm going to take a positive 3 step, finally getting to the target value 2. In this way, I've taken three steps to get to the value 2, and I'm going to return 3 as the final answer. Feel free to try out more different cases, and you'll realize that 3 is indeed the best and the most optimal solution. Now we have this example in our hand. How can we actually write an algorithm that does the same? Let's talk about the logic and observations needed to solve this problem. All right, to understand the logic and the observations needed to solve this problem, Let's take an example. Let's say that the input given to us is 5. That is, somehow from the point 0, we have to reach to the point 5 on the number line. How can we do that? Well, the first thing we'll do is quickly set up a running sum. This is going to be the sum of all the values that we've seen up till now. All right, so we're going to, we're going to start this running sum from 1 and we'll see what happens next. Our first goal, our primary goal right now is to somehow reach 5. Like, clearly 1 is not enough to reach 5. Taking just one step from 0 will not make us reach to 5, so let's go ahead and add 2. That is, from 0, I took one step towards the positive direction, and then two steps more towards the positive direction. This gives me at the running sum of 3, which is still not equal to 5, so we'll keep on going. At this point, I've taken one step forward, then two, and then three steps forward, getting me to the point 6. At this point, the number 6 is greater than the number 5, which means that we have somehow overshot our boundaries, right? Our target was to reach the point 5, but we've actually reached the point 6, somewhere far beyond. How can we come back? Alright, so how can we come back? And the obvious answer is, okay, try flipping the signs of any one of these and see if it works. Yeah, so we had this plus 1 over here. How about this? How about I convert this plus 1 to... Uh, minus one. Yeah. What is this going to give me? This is going to give me a running sum of four. I have clearly undershot by one. All right. So one does not work out. What about two? What if I try flipping the sign of two? So we'll have plus one minus two plus three. This would also undershoot and similarly for three. None of the permutations and combinations of the signs will work out for 1, 2, 3. Which means that there is a clear need for uh, having another number. We already have 1, 2, 3. Let's also have 4. Right? So we, we take one step forward, then 2, then 3, then 4. And we reach to a point 10. Right? We are at the number line giving us the point 10. All right? But 10 is again quite a bit. And it's going to overshoot our target, which was 5. So again, now I want to go back. Can I go back? Again, 
I'm going to go ahead and try out all the permutations and combinations, see if this plus one can become minus one. So it, the sum will become eight, blah, 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 whatever combinations you'll try. Actually, feel free to pause right now and write down all the permutations and combinations you can think of. Currently, we are at this running sum of 10 and we have to somehow go back to five. We have to somehow in this array reduce by five amounts. Can you do that? The answer is no. That's because there's something going on. See, one key observation in solving this problem is realizing that whenever you remove x from the running sum, that is, whenever you convert, say, a plus 2 to a minus 2, you're going to decrease the running sum by 2 times the amount. So if I take 2 and if I convert plus 2 to minus 2, I'm going to reduce the score by 2 times 2. Or if I picked 3, I would reduce the score by 6. Feel free to try it out. 1 plus 2 minus 3 plus 4 will give you 6 values, will actually reduce 6 from this 10, giving you 4. Alright, cool. So now that we have established that removing x or flipping the sign of x decreases the sum by 2x amount, can I reformulate it like just plain reformulation? And can I say that to decrease y amounts from the running sum, that is to reduce 5 from the running sum, in this case 10, to get to the final answer which is A, to decrease by y amounts, I have to somehow remove y by 2 values of y by 2 as a total sum from the running sum. Converting plus 2, sorry, okay, we'll take the case of plus 3. Converting plus 3 to a minus 3 gave us 3 times 2 and 6 as the cost. Now reformulating, when we have 10 and we want to reduce it by 5, that is because we are overshooting by 5, so we want to reduce the score by 5 and to decrease the score by 5, we have to somehow reduce 2.5. Is that even possible? It's not. And that is why we were not able to find any permutation or combination of all of these 1, 2, 3, 4 to get to the solution of A equals to 5. Alright, so what do we do next? It's clear that this is again unable to actually get us to the answers. So how about this? We're again stuck. Let's just add one more number. So we already took one step forward, then two, then three, then four. Let's just take one more step forward, getting us to a total running sum of 15. Now from 15, we're overshooting five by 10. And so now to decrease by 10, is there a way we can remove 10 by 2 or 5 from the running sum. Is there a way we can remove 5 from the running sum? What we can do is we can take this 5, then we can take this plus 5 and we can convert it to a minus 5. Or alternatively, we can take this plus 1 and plus 4 together, flip both of their signs and we'll get the same answer. Same the case for plus 2 plus 3. Just convert plus 2 plus 3 to minus 2 minus 3, keep everything else the same, and you will get to a equals to 5. Alright, so we explored a lot, we learned a lot, and we figured out that this is pretty much the core of the solution. To decrease by y amounts, we have to remove y by 2 from the running sum. Now, now the question is, when can we remove y by 2? The only real constraint is that the numbers that we're using here are integers. So we have to somehow ensure that y by 2 is an integer value. In other words, y modulo 2 is 0. All right, let's actually formalize the logic we have seen and code it up. All right, so let's get started with the code. The first thing we'll do is set up the variable i. This is going to keep a track of how many steps we can take forward or backward. Now, i is only as important as the running sum, which we're going to start from 0. Running sum simply represents the cumulative effects of all of the steps you've taken up till now. Basically representing that this is the point we are on. Now we're going to say while the running sum is lesser than a, that is while we still have a bunch more steps to even reach a, let's go ahead and take those steps. So i increases by 1 and the running sum increases by i. Super, super simple. Now when this while loop terminates, we'll have two conditions. Either the running sum is equal to a, in that case, great. Just return i as is. However, 
there is a set of cases where we have the running sum minus a giving us the overflow value right so in the case of a equals to 5 we first figure out the running sum we figured out how much it was overshooting by now overshooting by 1 was solved by adding another value which was plus 4 and this again overshooting by 5 was solved by adding one more value which is plus 5 now the reason why we did that was to simply say that to decrease the overflow value by y amount that is in this case 10 we had to remove y by 2 from the running sum in other words if the y is even then only we can terminate otherwise we'll have to keep on adding more and more items so what we can do is we can say you know what while this is true while the running sum is an odd number mod 2 not equals to 0 while the running sum minus a is an odd number we have to keep on adding numbers and we'll have to do this again just like we did above now only once we have both of these in hand then we have a valid solution so we're going to actually go ahead and try this out try with 5 and our function returns 5 which is in fact the correct answer as we've already seen now one more test case that we want to check on before we test this out formally is the fact that a can be from negative 10 to the power 9 to positive 10 to the power 9 these negative values we haven't really considered up till now but if you realize these negative values are nothing but a flip of the number line so whatever steps we were taking in the forward direction now become the steps in the backward direction and the backward direction steps become the forward direction steps nothing really changes because the goal which is to find the minimum number of moves required to reach that point remain the same regardless of which direction you're going in in that effect i can say a simply as the absolute value of a we can test this out and we get correct answer now you may also be tempted to submit this and fair enough you know this logic works and test case works correctly but this is not going to get accepted that's because the time complexity will fail and we have too much of a time constraint a can be 10 to the power 9 which means that even an order of n solution will not work now the thing is what takes the most time is this loop right we are taking steps slowly and slowly building up to a we're somehow trying to reach a but this is the most time consuming step because there's a mathematical shortcut that we can take now what is that mathematical shortcut it involves rearranging and looking at the problem differently now if you look at this this is just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 blah 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 for larger values in other words is the sum of first n natural numbers what we can do is exploit that property so we can say that the, the sum of first and natural numbers is nothing but n n plus 1 by 2 and we want to take this value and we want to equate it to it to find the maximum possible value of n right what we can do is rearrange it and solve the quadratic equation to get this value of n instead of starting i and running sum from 0 we can start i from this n value and the running sum from n n plus 1 by 2 let's actually do that so we'll have i as nothing but the square root of 1 plus 8 times a minus 1 and whole divide by 2 mm, looks correct cool uh, also the square root will be a positive value so sorry it will be a floating point value so we'll have to convert that to an integer and also we have to import that so we'll say from math import square root super simple now the running sum instead of starting from 0 will start from i times i uh, i plus 1 damn it i plus 1 by 2. Uh, this loop is not really necessary but there is a case where uh, we will still need one if condition. Now explaining that is too much work and I am getting lazier so feel free to think about why we need that test case why we need this if condition. In any case I am going to hit submit and uh, go sleep.